What is up, everybody? Matt Kajeski here, back again with the Awesome Channel, talking preseason DFS, and we have a huge slate of action today, talking Saturday games. We will give you a position-by-position position look, talking about the each player at each of those spots. But before we get started, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all other content goes live, including strategy shows, including live before locks, all for the preseason. And for those of you looking for a little more, head over to Osmo. Check out our projections, depth charts, preseason notes. We have everything you need to dominate these contests. But let's get into it. We are going to talk about the top players at each position, give a little bit of context as to why. And it starts out today with the Baltimore Ravens looking at Tyler Huntley. Now, Lamar Jackson, he may make his debut. We don't know. But either way, he's not expected to play a ton. And then Baltimore, unfortunately, dealt with some injuries. They lost Trace McSorley, their presumed backup for the preseason. Now, they did bring in Kenji Bahar as a third-string quarterback. But we're not expecting a ton of playing time from Bahar leaving Tyler Huntley to play most of the snaps. And he projects for six drives pretty comfortably, about 113 passing yards, just over half a score. And Tyler Huntley has dual threat ability, was a very strong rusher in his time with Utah. When we look at what he did in week one, Tyler Huntley was out there for 39 snaps, which is fantastic as well. They showed a willingness to use him. So he is a player that we should be isolating today, somebody that we really like in DFS lineups. Other quarterbacks you may potentially look at, Sam Allinger for Indianapolis. He played a half, and he'll be competing with Jacob Eason, has good rushing ability there as well if you're looking for a pivot. But let's head over to the running back position, and this is a darling from last week's preseason DFS. It's A.J. Rose of the Minnesota Vikings. This is still an attractive situation to target because of injuries in the backfield. Kenny Nwangwu is still out with a knee injury. He was drafted by this team. Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison did not play in week one. Now, their coach did say their starters are expected to play some, in quotations. That still doesn't mean probably more than a series or two for players like Cook and Alexander Madison. Amir Abdullah only played 18 snaps, and that left 48 snaps for A.J. Rose. He projects for just over 78 rushing yards, about a half a touchdown. Strong pass catcher for A.J. Rose as well. Played his college ball at Kentucky. And he actually hit the 100-yard bonus in preseason week one, which is basically unheard of. We're not expecting him to do the same again here, but we are expecting a large majority of the backfield work. Again, only Dalvin Cook, Madison, and Abdullah are in the backfield to compete with him. All their roster spots are safe. So at the running back position, Rose makes a lot of sense. A couple other names to monitor. Tyson Williams from Baltimore, Rico Dodo from Dallas, a few other names just to look at. At the wide receiver position, we have to talk about Los Angeles. Sean McVay does not play his starters in the preseason. Looking at week one, he did not play. Well, not only did he not play Stafford and John Wolford, but at receiver, he didn't play Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, Deshaun Jackson, or Van Jefferson. Since then, Tristan Jackson and Bennett Skowronik have gotten injured. That maybe means we have five receivers healthy for Los Angeles. We'll see if Woods, Cup, Jackson, and Jackson sit again, but right now it looks like we're just going to have Tutu Atwell, Jeremiah Hadle, Landon Akers, and J.J. Koski for most of the snaps, depending on whether they have one of those starters play. J.J. Koski played 48 snaps in their first game, did not have a ton of production, but anytime you can get 48 snaps out of a preseason receiver, that is something you certainly want to target. And just for reference, Tutu Atwell, 26 snaps. Jeremiah Hadle, 22, and Landon Akers, 31 on the Rams offense. Any way you want to shake this, these receivers are going to be seeing condensed opportunity. You just had Koski playing the most snaps in week one. So he's somebody we should highlight again here. Stacking option if you're looking at Bryce Perkins in the second half. And to close this out, we will head to the tight end position. We are going to go back to Baltimore, giving you a natural stacking option with Huntley if you decide to go that route. It is tight end Josh Oliver. His situation looks even more attractive with Mark Andrews going down in practice, not expecting him to play. It looked like cramps, but pretty severe enough to get taken to the hospital. Nick Boyle is still not practicing. He had knee surgery this offseason. That leaves just four healthy tight ends on the roster. 
And Josh Oliver played 51 snaps in week one. Absolutely mind-blowing production. He's projected for four drives here, so we're not expecting the same amount of production. We'll probably see a little more Ben Mason, Eric Tomlinson, and Tony, Pol Tony Poljan, but still a ton of opportunity for Josh Oliver. Again, projected four drives, just over a catch. Tight end position is very volatile, so anytime you can lock in somebody that is seeing upwards of 50 snaps, that is going to be a very strong target. Also, some condensed opportunity in Tampa Bay, condensed opportunity in Los Angeles and Minnesota if you want to take pivots on the tight end position away from Josh Oliver. But that'll do it for today. I'm Matt Kajeski on Twitter at Matt underscore Kajeski. Hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know who your favorite preseason play is, and check, over the, check out the preseason package at Osmo. Otherwise, good luck, everybody. We will see you again next time.